Senator Graham. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, <clears throat> from the President's point of view, do, does the authorization to use military force, does it in any way restrict his ability to go after terrorist organizations that represent a national security threat to this country in places outside of Afghanistan that are not uh, within the hierarchy of uh, al-Qaeda that existed on September the 11th, 2001? Senator, it, I don't, it would not. Okay. So do we need to change it to give the president, is there anything the president would like us to do differently than, than that exists today? Senator, I think the AUMF provides very clear guidance for al-Qaeda, Taliban, and associated forces. He has many other authorities that you're aware of that he could use that, that he used prior to AUMF to deal with any other threats to our national security. Do you agree with, with me the war against radical Islam or terror, whatever description you'd like to uh, provide, uh, will go on after the second term of President Obama? Senator, in my judgment, this is going to go on for quite a while, and yes, beyond the ter second term of the president. And beyond this term of Congress? Yes, sir. I think it's at least 10 to 20 years. I, I think you're absolutely right. I think we're involved in a generational struggle. So uh, the lessons of 9-11 uh, are always learned the hard way. So <clears throat> your advice would be to the committee is to do nothing? Senator, I think it's appropriate to review mm -hmm. a law that was written 12 years ago. And doing ago. nothing is an exceptional, you know, for Congress, could be the right answer more often than not. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir, I think it's appropriate uh, time to review this, and we're taking this very seriously to review it. But at this time, we don't find that it would that it would improve our ability to conduct the global, our global campaign against these organizations. Well, General, do you agree with that? Uh, Senator, I, I agree that the current AUMF is adequate for us. We, we have, in the time I've had in Central Command and down at, at ISAF in Afghanistan and, and also here on the Joint Staff, you know, we've been able to, to, to go after the enemy that uh, is fits within the AUMF. Do you agree with me, uh, Ms. Secretary, that the inherent authority of the president's commander in chief would give him or her great latitude in terms of pursuing terrorist organizations that represent a threat against the United States apart from Congress. Yes, sir, I do agree. But you also agree that when the Congress and the president and our courts are all aligned, we're stronger as a nation. When we're all on the same sheet of music. Yes, sir. So the one thing I, I do believe would be helpful is if the Congress does more than just criticize, uh, that we find ways to empower the commander in chief, and also, it, you know, in some ways, control the power of the of the executive branch. But uh, I tend to agree that what we have today uh, is working. But we all agree that the enemy of today is different than it was on 9/11. Do you agree with that, sir? They have changed a bit, but in many ways, it's. They have not changed very much at all. They are operating in a very similar way that they were in 1998 out of traditional strongholds in Yemen and East Africa. They have expanded in North Africa and some other areas, but quite frankly, this has been a global organization since day one. But would you agree with me because of the pressure we've placed on the enemy in Afghanistan and Iraq, they're moving? Yes, sir. They've always moved. Even in 2002, they were very active in North Africa. Uh, so, and, so, and in what, parts what, of Levant. So I, it, I couldn't agree with you more. So. From your point of view, you have all the authorization and legal authorities necessary to conduct a drone strike against uh, terrorist organizations in Yemen without changing the AUMF. Yes, sir, I do believe that. you agree with that, General? I do, sir. General, do you agree with that? I do, sir. Okay, could we send military members into Yemen to strike against one of these organizations? Does the president have that authority to, to put boots on the ground in Yemen? Uh, as I mentioned before, there's domestic authority and international law authority. Uh, at the moment, uh, the basis for putting the boots in the ground in Yemen, we respect the, the sovereignty of Yemen um, and uh, it would. Uh, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about does he have the legal authority under our law to do that? 
Un under domestic authority, he would have that authority. I hope the Congress is okay with that. I'm okay with that. Uh, does he have authority to put boots or ground in the Congo? Yes, sir, he does. Okay. Do you agree with me that when it comes to international terrorism, we're talking about a worldwide struggle? Absolutely, sir. Would been. you agree with me? The battlefield is wherever the enemy chooses to make it? Yes, sir, from Boston to, to, to uh, the Fatah. I couldn't agree with you more. We're in, do you agree with that, General? Yes, sir, I agree that the, the enemy decides where the battlefield is. And it could be any place on the planet, and we have to be aware and able to act. And do you have the ability to act, and you're aware of the threats? Yes, sir. We do have the ability to react, and we are tracking the threats globally. From my point of view, I think your analysis is correct, and I appreciate all of your service to our country. Thank you, Senator Green.